Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Moments with Mom and Dad. This is when Bob and I share life lessons as natural parents and spiritual parents, things that we've learned through the years that we've applied as principles in our life and training our children um, and in mentoring others in Christ. And so it's our joy to be able to come to you again and share another life lesson with you. So what's our topic here today, Bob? Our topic today is about the church. You know, there's a disturbing trend uh, in the United States that people are exiting mm -hmm. the church in great numbers, particularly the younger generation. And so this is in direct contradiction to what the Bible tells us, that in the last days, as we see the day approaching, we should be assembling more and more to encourage and exhort one another in the faith. And so I just want to talk about the importance of church, particularly the local church of Jesus Christ and the place that that has or should have in our lives. We cannot uh, marginalize the importance of, of the church. Uh, we believe that it's, again, an, an institution that God has set up after the family. He gave us the church. And the Bible says that he set the members in the church, each one of them, as yeah. it has pleased him. And so many times we take our decision to go to church or even what church to go to is something that's arbitrary and totally within our discretion. But the truth of the matter is that we need to be prayerful about where we fit in the church and where we are to go to the church. There's a lot of choices out there for churches. There's all kinds of flavors, if you will, uh, separated most of the time by minor doctrinal um, differences. Differences, yeah. sure. But the important thing is that we understand what gifts that God has put in our life and that we find a church that not only we can grow in, uh, grow in our knowledge of God, and grow together in relationship, in community, koinonia, as the Bible says, but that we are also serving uh, out through in our church and through our church in our community. And so I want to just talk about the importance of that and why is it that people have decided that they don't need church? You think that COVID has anything to do with it? Well, I think that it may have impacted some of the trends that we're seeing. But I think the other thing is never before in history has there been available to people through media, other means through which they could hear and learn uh, with podcasts and what's online, Facebook, live streaming, television. And I think a lot of people choose have chosen that as a means through which they feel like, well, I'm, I'm getting my spiritual sustenance that way. And yes, they're good, but that's not community. Um, can, you know, anytime a believer is isolated from community, that's not a good thing. It's, it opens them up to be a target. And I think that just with COVID, there's been more of a trend of people getting a little bit lazy maybe and using other means, um, that are available to, um, get a spiritual diet. Yeah. I would say experiencing God. People have discovered that they can, quote, experience God in a lot of different ways, whether it's podcasts or live streams, etc. But there's no substitute, like you say, for koinonia. And that's kind of where the church began. They came together to break bread, to pray, and to fellowship with one another. And you can't do that uh, over the internet. Uh, there's an intimacy that comes with koinonia that there's just no substitute for. I know I've been in plenty of Zoom meetings. We've even done training in Zoom meetings. Uh, I'm trying to think whether I've ever experienced a worship service uh, in a Zoom meeting. I have been a part of live streaming uh, worship services, but uh, folks, it's, it's just not the same. 
And God has ordained that we assemble together. Uh, it's just not possible to assemble uh, while you're sitting in your home and everybody else is sitting in their home. We are meant to assemble together. The Bible says also in Ephesians that the church is increasing by the participation of every part. Every part is adding their, their, supply. their yep. supply, and that is what causes the church to increase. And so we need to hammer this home uh, loud and clear to people that the local church, and don't get me wrong, we have been a part of a number of local churches uh, in our life growing up, and because we've relocated and started over a number of times, We've had to find our place in a different local church. And so there's no such thing as a perfect church. Every church you're going to walk into, there's going to be personality conflicts. There's going to be uh, opportunities. To growth. Growth, to walk in love. To walk to in walk love. And forgiveness. But those are all the things that are absolutely necessary for our character development. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is also a terrific opportunity is to find corporate faith, which is a lot better, a lot stronger, and a lot more effective than just your faith alone. And you think about the instances in the Bible, I'm thinking in the book of Acts, where they were all came together and prayed corporately, and the place was shaken where they were assembled. And God worked mighty miracles and signs. Well, how is it that it's possible to have a corporate faith and a unity when people are scattered, when people are making it to church maybe twice a month, which is the average church attendance these days, even for people who call themselves members, they get to local church services twice a month. Now, that's pretty sad. That is. You know, I just, you mentioned one of the things that happens when the body comes together, each member bringing a supply of the spirit. Um, and I think about the fact that when we assemble together, there, there are some things about God, um, the Father, that we will only experience and come to know in a corporate way, not individually. Um, there are some things that we will see about him that can only be experienced as a corporate body comes together. And so it's like um, a diet that would, if somebody was eating a diet of only one food group, they may be getting some nutrition, but not all that they could get. And so if, if we felt like I could be sustained as a believer apart from a local body, it's kind of like the same thing. No, there are some things you're never going to learn um, unless you're in a corporate setting. There's some things about God that you're never going to experience in his presence unless you're in a corporate setting. And so it's an important part of our spiritual development and growth is the necessity for community. I mean, we're made for community. Um, a television broadcast or a podcast can't bring to me the physical touch of a sister in the Lord or a brother in the Lord greeting me with warmth. Yeah, yeah. And we can't ever underestimate the power of a physical touch, a hug, mm -hmm. just a touch. Of a welcome, touch. just the welcome of a person's heart on just the benefit that it does emotionally for you, let alone spiritually. Yeah. You know, we cannot allow the weakened state of the church in our culture to uh, impact our thinking about what God intended for the church. Jesus is building his church, and whatever Jesus is building can't fail. It's going to become more glorious and more triumphant uh, as the days go along. And so even though it might appear that our church is not making, making the impact on the culture as it should right now, I believe our destiny is to make an impact on our culture and to reveal to the world, uh, the Bible says in Ephesians, the manifold wisdom of God, which is made known through the church, 
but also to reveal to the world what it's like to live in the kingdom of God with kingdom values, with kingdom beliefs, et cetera, and yeah. so on. Yeah. I just think of, you know, we've talked in the past about um, life lessons. There are so many things that because the families um, in the world that we live in right now are broken, that people don't learn life lessons that they were supposed to learn in the home. One of the things that's so amazing about the grace of God is that church is a family and the lessons you didn't learn, uh, maybe in your home, you have an opportunity to learn those life lessons, which are an important part of spiritual development and growth for maturing. Yeah, the reality of, of in the days that we live in is that the family is broken well, and that the church does become a surrogate well, family. Well, with fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, yeah. and so on. And love is um, God's love. Agape love cannot be developed um, by yourself um, because you have no nothing trying that love or testing that love if you're an island unto yourself, where agape love grows and develops, and the more it grows and develops, the more godlike we are in the life that we're living and demonstrating and the way that agape grows is in relationship it's in community um because it is going i'm i'm going to have to make a choice whether i'm going to be selfish or selfless that doesn't happen if i'm an island to myself it happens when there is relationship and the church is about relationship and community right and bearing one another's burden yes etc yeah well, I trust that you're probably involved in a local church, uh, but our encouragement to you today is that you become even more deeply involved and committed in your local church and supportive of the leadership. Uh, you know, these people in leadership, whether it's your pastor or your elders, uh, whatever uh, role or function that they have in the local church, they're targets for the devil. Uh, and we need to be lifting them up and, and praying for them regularly because, you know, you could, you could turn to uh, on the news or read in, in some Christian periodicals that some of these leaders are being taken out in one way or another, yeah. and that is not an indictment on them personally. That's more of an indictment on the whole church particularly those people who surround them, who should be holding up their hands in prayer. And I think it's likely that they're not. And so let's have a renewed commitment to our local church and to the delegated leadership that God has placed in the church. Let's our, renew our commitment not only to uh, fully engage with our gifts for serving in the church, but to really encourage people to come out and to be a part of the local church. Yeah, I think of one last thing here that I would want to share is that the gift of God in a pastor, because Ephesians talks about the gifts that Jesus has given to the church pastors, teachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists. The gift is perfect, but it comes through imperfect people. And we have to remember that um, the gifts are perfect, but there's no perfect leadership. Like you were share, sharing here a moment ago, um, the Holy Spirit is perfect. But then again, he moves through imperfect people. Um, and sometimes we get in the way of some things that the Spirit of God wants to do, but we have to have grace for that. It, it just sometimes what I think about is how a, in a home a teenager thinks they know more than their parents and that they're wiser than their parents. And oftentimes in the church, you've got a similar situation where parents see a bigger picture of where this family needs to go and what the finances are like and the goals that are set. Um, the teenagers might come in and think that they, they could do a better job. And sometimes in a church setting, you deal with the same thing. Leadership sees a bigger picture. They have a, a scope that they're taking the body too, but sometimes as members in the body, um, we don't always see the way that they see, and that's where we need to pray for them and have grace and trust the gift 
of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Well, in this is my confidence and my hope that Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And that he will present himself to himself a bride without spot or oh. blemish that is triumphant in the earth, prepared to rule and reign with him in his kingdom. Again, that is our destiny as the church. No matter what we see, it's Jesus, the master builder, that is perfecting us all. And he's perfecting his church and he's preparing his bride. And so I have all confidence in him and know that it's all going to turn out all right. Amen. Well, thank you for inviting us again into your home or your office place or whatever, wherever we're meeting together. We want to let you know that we appreciate you. Please tell other people about the Moments with Mom and Dad podcast and and let them know about uh, what we're doing and, and maybe how to be involved. We're praying for you regularly. We love you. We bless you in the name of Jesus until we see you again. Bye-bye.